In my last video, I outlined the Ten Commandments of High Handicap Golf, and today I put them to the test while playing poorly. How poorly? I'll let you decide. I never saw that ball. Oh, I didn't hit that well. That wasn't good. Oh, I pulled it. That's not it. Oh my goodness. Suffice it to say it was ugly at times, but I committed to following my own commandments, starting by playing aggressively at conservative targets. Okay, you said can't reach the left bunker, so just aim at it? Okay. It worked out with my first tee shot, and now I'm going to check my ego before hitting my first approach. Okay, so we have 148 in, wind's moving a little bit left to right, front pin. Looks like a long miss is still putting, so I'm gonna take a whole lot of club here, 165 club. Indeed, the first commandment is to check your ego, and here it enables me to miss pin high. Catch a piece there, just scoot it off, but that's fine. Downhill, moving left. And now it's time for the day's first putt. I race to the tee without warming up on the practice screen. And if we're sticking with biblical terminology, that ought to be considered a sin. But after seeing the pace on the first one, I hit this one firmly at the hole. So 444 and into. Set expectations here. This is, is it stroke hole one? Yeah, stroke hole one. I never saw that ball. Oh, skipped it 80 yards. Oops. Another commandment is to set expectations. As a handicapped golfer, I'll make more bogeys than pars on stroke hole one, so I won't let this miss get to me. So we have two five four in. It's not always bash five wood here. In this case, this hole's pretty wide open, so I am going to bash five wood. There was nothing wrong with this train of thought, but I wasn't expecting to come out the gate with two out of ten execution. Ooh, that wasn't hit well at all. Don't go in the bunker. I think it is going to be in that bunker. Okay, we have 89 in. Certainly haven't played this hole well, but we can still put it on the green, give ourselves a look at par. I'm not fretting how the ball got here. I'm just focused on the shot at hand, and I hit a good one. Okay, we're happy with that. A little uphill there, left to right. I have a look at par here, and after misjudging the pace of the first putt of the day, I'm just fine with this one and cleaning up for bogey. Okay, par five. What's the miss been so far? A snap hook that carries 80 yards. I'm trying to make the swing thought big high cut. For the first time today, we've hit a respectable drive, even if it wasn't our intended ball flight. Okay, so pins in the back and it's 280. And we have water on the left at 200 and a bunker on the right at 200. So my four hybrid is about 200, 195, but we're into win, so I think it's the club here that takes all the trouble out of play. Avoiding trouble is another commandment, and the golf gods reward us for following it with two consecutive good shots. Thanks. Okay, this looks attackable. You always need to assess the lie. And the big thought here is don't catch it fat because it's definitely soft here. This lie should send it a little left. And just like that, it's our first green in regulation today. Take that. All right, Zach, show me how to do it. Good putt. Go in. Somebody play here before. So it's moving right, which is crazy. Trust what I saw, I guess. Par fives are where I do the majority of my scoring, and I'd love this one to go, but I've read it just a bit off, and I'll settle for par. All day long with that straight driver. Good ball. Yeah, good golf is boring golf, right? I'm trying to draw inspiration from Zach, a near scratch golfer who plays the best kind of golf boring golf. Okay. okay. So we have a very downhill lie here. So 132, downhill lie. Pretty tough lie. It's going to come out kind of low. From a lie like this, the swing thought is simple. Make good contact on this ball. And I managed to do it. Yeah, we'll take that result. A little downhill slider here. The reward is another look at birdie. And this one's looking pretty good. Hold it. Oh. But it's not quite meant to go. And it's another par. 211 here. And there's all sorts of trouble left. So we're hitting... 205 club and hoping to miss to the right. Mm, that was hit really poorly, but I'm gonna get away with it. Good miss. It's a terrible strike on the tee, but now I get to go to work greenside. Oh, not quite. Where I follow one of my commandments by hitting a stock shot that I have. A little bump and run with the gap wedge. And even though it's a bit off, there we go. The flat stick saves us. After so many poor strikes, I'm thrilled to be just one over here. A little cut. And now it's a scoring opportunity. Okay. A par five. So it's about 315 according to the cart. Just trying to hit a five wood up there and have a short iron or wedge in. Oops. <laughs> I'm going to get away with it, which is funny. Wow, not hitting him well today. Okay, so we have 97 and Caddy says, don't play it more than 100 and miss a little left. So that's what we're going to try to do. I followed Zach's instructions here and it will give me a good look at birdie. Yours break a little less than it looked like it would? Yeah, so I'm gonna have mine just like a hair outside then. But this is one I'd like back. Oh, I didn't hit it. 
Oh yeah, I did. Just a bad putt. Yeah, yeah, he's fired. <laughs> I'm trying to have a new rule where I don't back off of clubs. Like, my 7-iron's too much here, but I'm not going to try to get fancy with it. Take a full golf swing at him. Another bad strike. Oh, I didn't hit that well. Go! It was hit very poorly. Oh my goodness, did I get away with that. Okay, Adam, let's make one. But we talk about the rub of the course, and sometimes the rub of the course gives you a look at birdie. Yes, sir. Thanks. I dated a girl, and she got me into golf. And then we broke up. I went to the PGA Tour Superstore, and I was there for three hours. <laughs> she left, and that was, that was the final fight. <laughs> okay, I'm aiming right at the guy. Oh, another one of those. So 141. Looks like there's a bit of green in front of that. My 8-iron carries 135, and I figure that it's the right club for this shot. Another all-world kick. <laughs> I think it's just right edge. And here's my look at back-to-back -back birdies. Ugh. I didn't want to start it outside the hole, but I guess it had to, hey? But not this time. Hmm, good shot wrong way. Looked like it didn't go anywhere. So this is tough. Anything that misses left is in the water. So I'm actually aiming far right corner of the green, aiming right and even putting a cut swing on it. I miss short right of the green, that's fine. It's basically the goal. And course knowledge will help me the next time I'm here. This was actually not the right place to miss. And now I'm in a bit of trouble. That's okay. Put it on the green, have a look at par. So we actually missed pin high, but definitely right, like we said. There's a little bit of green there. So I want to aim a little right, because it'll feed down left. And high and soft isn't the best shot in my arsenal. And you'll see what happens with this one. That wasn't good. Just trying to get fancy. This shot might even be tougher than the last one, actually. It's going to have to come up here, all the way up here, and then funnel down. And after dodging big numbers for the entirety of the front nine, this chip unfortunately seals my fate. Release. Oh, man. It's the shot I was trying to hit. And I was trying to put mine up high there, and I thought it would trickle down. I guess I just... I was surprised it didn't keep coming down. Yeah. I... There's still a bit work to be done from above the hole here. Nope. Did this hole get away from me? And we'll tap this one in for the double bogey. Candidly, my ball striking has been plain bad so far, but I accepted playing for bogey on a couple of holes, and more importantly, I followed my own rules of course management. And before we check out the back nine, we'll pause for a brief word from today's sponsor. Every time I go to pick up new golf gear, I notice that costs are continuing to rise, and dipping into my savings has become more difficult than ever as the last year has been historically bad for building wealth. Even some banks have failed. And now everyone's trying to find ways to diversify their investments, and they want to do it while avoiding the swings of the stock market and avoiding the upkeep required in real estate. Millions of wealthy Americans are generating income with appreciating assets, and now you can too with practically no legwork. In fact, Masterworks platform has sold over $45 million in assets, with the net proceeds paid out directly to investors like you. I've been talking about Masterworks on the channel since last April, and they offer investments in fine art, multi-million dollar hard assets. Contemporary art has outpaced the S&P 500 index since 1995, and that's because like real estate, these assets aren't subject to the same shock as other markets. Masterworks offerings are all SEC qualified, and to date, every single one of Masterworks exits has returned a profit to investors, returning 9, 17, and even 32% net return to investors from sales. Their offerings sell out in days or sometimes even hours, but you can get special access to skip the line by using the link in the description. And we're back. <laughs> it is gonna work. And the ball striking hasn't gotten any better. Better outcome than it deserved, which is the theme of this round. So 164, but front pin, and Zach is saying, Miss right. Yeah, I'm gonna hit a 175 club. Little five hybrid, new one in the bag. And I'm thinking the ball has to fade from this lie. Oh, it hooked hard. But it doesn't. Oh, that's gonna be a very bad place. Oh, yeah, back bunker there. Oh, is this tough. And now I'm following another course management rule. This is a situation where I have to get the ball on the green. Yeah, we'll take that. Even though I have 25 or 30 feet here, it's far better than trying to get cute and having a worse outcome. We'll take the bogey and move on. And we finally hit one solid. That'll work. 274, aiming at the left greenside bunker. It's a wide open fairway here that accommodates this mess. Oh, I pulled it. Might go into that bunker. No, nope, short of that bunker. Okay. Okay, 82, a bit into, little pitch and putt shot. This is my favorite number in cultivated at pitch and putt. 
but the next one might be the worst stroke I've put on a putt on the channel. Terrible putt. It's way offline, but I do manage to knock it in for par. So 157, wind off the right or into you figure? All right, aim right at the stick and put a good swing on it. We have a gallery on the tee for this one, and just when I've told them the name of the channel, they get an idea of how I play. I live up to that name every day. <laughs> so I missed long left here, and this is a tricky little up and down. It's really got a crest here. I'm trying to get a feel for bruising the ground on these practice swings. And even though I catch this one a bit thin, it does get pretty close to the hole. This is also right edge, and I won't pull it this time. But you can tell here that I'm still a little plagued from the terrible putt on the last hole. I didn't pull it. <laughs> and I have to settle for a frustrating bogey. Oh my goodness. And the driver misses are still here too. What a day, Zach. What a day. But I've mentioned before that putting the ball in play on a par 5 leaves you with a short par 4. This one skirts the power lines, and I'm close. Okay, so 103 and into, I'm just going to hit a pitching wedge. This is a good wedge, but the course decides it's going to cash in on some of the karma I got on the front. I got to putt through a scar on the screen. Got to go right over that scar, too. <laughs> and it's another pesky par. This is a much better trajectory than some lately, but a high cut won't go far. That's not too good. All right, 206 and into. Nevertheless, it's never too late for your best shot of the day, and this is definitely mine. Yeah. It winds up over the back, and I'll take my time walking this putt. Got to go around that ball. I have a good target at the halfway point to the hole, and this one is tracking right at it. Go oh, in the hole. Not quite, but I'm thrilled with the par here. And the bunkers here begin at about 240, so nice. this is definitely a five wood for me. So 127. Like, I have a 125 carry and a 135 carry. Uh, so you're 125. There's a ridge just short of the pin here, and even though this lands just at the top of it, it comes down. No, a little short, I think. And with greens running at nine and a big uphill putt, oh. that's quite a bash that I put on that one. Yeah, I was worried about getting it up here. Yeah. <laughs> uphill into wind, full swing. And I do manage to clean up the par putt. <laughs> this is something we haven't had all day. A good strike. Thanks. And a bad result. Yeah, kind of what I was worried about there. And bogeys are going to happen, especially after one like this. Oh, that's got to get legs. That doesn't mean that I don't reset before each shot. I'm still eyeing making this one, and it has a chance. Thanks. But it's not quite meant to be. I think I can get a 7-iron there, yeah? Yeah, you got to get it up there, okay. But this was an ego decision. That's not it. <laughs> and I'm going to pay for it. That was me trying to hit it too hard. Oh, that was silly. And now I'm short-sided to this pin. It has to get up this ridge, and it doesn't. Oh, mine came all the way back. And after skirting so many bogeys today, for the first time, oh. <laughs> we're going to card back-to-back -back bogeys here on 17. The last one of the day is always a good one, right? <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> but I'm still in good spirits, and this one, though ugly, Manages to get a good ways out there. 174. I'm still hitting a six iron, I think. Oh, was that hit poorly, Adam? Carried 150. I deserve that outcome. That's one more bad shot. But like I said, Thanks. I'm in good spirits. Thanks. I'm not a scratch golfer. And any day the ball striking can be this poor, and oh. I can still go out there and break 80, I'm a pretty sure. happy camper. In yeah. fact, the goal of this channel is to show a few things. Yes, it's to show you that by following a few simple rules of course management, you too can shoot better scores. But it's also to emphasize that there are lots of ways to have fun in this game. Even when your ball striking isn't there, and even when you violate some of your own rules of course management, there's no reason you can't keep a smile on your face and enjoy a great day on the golf course.